Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome back to another monthly freezer meal prep. I do these twice a month. One prep, I do full meals and the other prep, I do more like breakfast items, lunch items, snacks, things in between. And that is the style prep we are doing today. So to start off with, I washed up some raspberries because we are going to make some chocolate raspberry pudding. And no, this is not a freezer item. However, it's something that I've been wanting Wanting to get in the habit of making. I also wanted to see if my daughters liked it, which you will get to see a clip of here in a minute. But there are so many great health benefits to chia seeds and it's just a really, really easy food to make because you literally just mix all of the ingredients up, you let it sit for a little while in the refrigerator and it gets nice and thick and creamy and delicious. So this recipe I will link below along with all of the other recipes but I did tweak it a little bit and I added some stevia as well as maple syrup along with the other ingredients. Another note I wanted to make is I did multiply this recipe by about six times because I wanted to get a good amount of little single serving jars for in my refrigerator. If you guys recently watched my refrigerator organization video on my home channel, then you know I've been kind of trying to make my own single serving snacks and things like that instead of purchasing them. So I've been using these little jars and I have a turntable in my refrigerator that it's convenient to store things like this on. And I actually ended up with more of these than I thought. I figured I would get maybe about eight or so and I had to pull out a couple more jars to fill them up. And just remember with chia pudding, it always starts out on the runny side, but as you let it sit, it sets up and gets more of that tapioca type texture. And as you can see, they thoroughly enjoyed this pudding and I'm definitely making it again because they asked me to make it again. This week's video is sponsored by Toshiba, so big thanks to them. And with this next recipe, I'm going to show you how to cook with their versatile cooking assistant. It has five different functions, including air fry, microwave convection, crisp grill, and low temp cooking. To celebrate Prime Day, there is a discount event during the 11th of July to the 17th of July that you can get a 15% discount when you are purchasing the Toshiba microwave and air fryer appliance. If you've watched me for a while, you know I'm all about saving space and I feel like this kitchen appliance does just that. It gives you so many options in one appliance and you don't have to have a bunch of appliances sitting out on your countertop. This Toshiba one cubic foot and 18 watts microwave provides you with all the amazing features of any Toshiba microwave, but in a much more multifunctional design. It includes a position memory turntable, it's easy to clean interior, and ECO mode. Toshiba's manufacturing quality is supported by the cutting edge manufacturing and craftsmanship that ensures its exceptional quality. Another great feature is that it has a mute function. The sound on and off button allows you to stop the annoying beep when the cooking is finished. If you're a mom like me, you are free from waking up your family members early in the morning. So for today's recipe, I'm going to be using the air fry mode on this microwave and we are going to be prepping some breakfast bowls. I love having breakfast bowls in my freezer. It just makes for a really fast breakfast on busy days and this microwave air fryer definitely makes that job a little bit easier by being able to make everything nice and crispy. So I simply diced up my potatoes, my breakfast potatoes. I added my favorite seasoning, a little bit of avocado oil just for a great healthy option and then I dumped it right into the air fry tray on this rack. I also added in some diced onions and peppers and added that right to the rack as well. And I actually preheated the air fryer, so I turned it on at the temperature that I wanted it, which was about 425 for about six or seven minutes, just to get it nice and hot in there. And then I went ahead and put the air fry basket inside. Now what's really neat about this rack is, as you can see, you have two options on how close you wanna place your food 
to the air fry heating element. And this helps to ensure that you're not overcooking your food or undercooking your food depending on what you are air frying. So I flipped the rack to the side that kept the food a little further away from the heating element and it air fried my veggies absolutely perfect. So I just put them in for about 15 minutes first and then you're gonna see me stir them and I put them in for another 15 minutes. In the meantime, I'm scrambling my eggs for my breakfast bowls and this is my secret sauce two absolutely perfect eggs. It's my favorite way to make scrambled eggs. My daughters actually ask for it now because they've gotten so used to me making it this way. And that is just adding a nice dollop of sour cream into your eggs as you're whisking them. It makes them so creamy and so delicious. So here I pulled out the air fry basket out of the microwave and I just stirred my veggies around and popped it back into the microwave air fryer. So while everything was kind of finishing up cooking, I just chopped up some green onion. I laid out my bowls that I was going to put everything into. And as you can see, here is all of the veggies coming out of the Toshiba air fry microwave and they look absolutely delicious. So now I'm going to start building my breakfast bowls. Definitely check out the links and the information in the description box to get your hands on one of these microwaves. It saves so much space and you can cook and bake so many things in this versatile cooking assistant. So once I've combined all of my ingredients, I added a little cheddar cheese. I just put them into my containers and threw them in the freezer. Okay, so it's been a while since I have made some muffins in our house and we definitely needed some around. I'm not going to lie. I used cinnamon in a good amount of recipes this day and oh my, did it get me in the mood to think about fall recipes and fall coming. Fall is my favorite season to decorate for and to celebrate. I love autumn. So this is a coffee cake muffin recipe. It is is gluten-free if you are a gluten-free person we tend to do a lot of gluten-free recipes in our house we have some that are gluten-free and some that aren't so I do a mixture of a lot of different styles of recipes but this one is gluten-free I believe you could use regular flour and make them perfectly fine but the real treasure to these muffins is there is a cream cheese layer yes you heard me right a cream cheese layer these were so delicious so first First you mix up the batter like you saw and you put that in the bottom. Second you mix up the cream cheese layer which I'm doing right here and then you're going to make that signature coffee cake crumble for the top. My girls keep begging for these. I think the next time I make them I might make them in mini muffin form because these did end up to be nice big muffins when they were done which is one thing I love about these silicone molds from Amazon. They make nice big muffins but when you have little ones eating them it's nice to have them in smaller portion sizes. So I'm definitely keeping this recipe. It was a absolute home run and true to its name, it goes amazing with coffee. <laughs> And then I kept about half of these out and the other half I put into my freezer. I just put them in to a reusable Ziploc bag and they freeze fine and you can pull them out as you need them.
The next thing I prepped was something a little bit new. You all know that I do smoothie bags every once in a while and I decided to try doing some smoothie jars just to be a little bit more sustainable. I know I've been mentioning that. I've been just keeping in mind to try out more sustainable methods of prepping food. So I decided to make smoothie jars and just basically using some wide mouth pint jars to fill up all of my smoothie ingredients. I did a handful of spinach. My girls love spinach in smoothies. I feel like it's got such a great flavor profile. And then of course strawberries. Those are kind of coming out of season but still in season in some areas of the country. So I just cut those up into sizes that I felt like my blender would blend well with. And then on top of the strawberries I cut up some bananas and I don't often have problems with bananas turning brown. I know sometimes people say, how do you freeze bananas and they don't turn brown? But honestly, if they're going in a smoothie, it doesn't really matter if they turn brown anyway. And then I topped it with a little sprinkle of some cinnamon. And when I go to make these, I probably will add in some yogurt or some form of protein just to amp up the smoothie. Since I was busy prepping in an afternoon, I knew that dinner time was gonna roll around and I decided I'm already busy working in the kitchen instead of grabbing one of my freezer meals. I'll save that for another day and I would just quickly prep up something fun for dinner. So I had a bunch of veggies and I love sheet pan meals. I know you guys have been seeing them a little more often in my videos, but the flavor of roasted meat and vegetables is just absolutely delicious. And it's so simple. It's just such a fast and easy way for a mama to get dinner on the table and everybody really loves it and always raves about it. So I just did a combination of vegetables. And my little tip for you is if you're going to add in sweet potatoes or regular potatoes with softer vegetables, just make sure that they are diced a little smaller so that they cook and roast up about the same time the rest of your veggies do. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with really mushy, softer vegetables and your potatoes won't be done. So just for the fun of it and obviously to be a little bit more appealing to my children, I made a fun little rainbow sheet pan and just did veggies in a rainbow order and then I used a smaller sheet pan to cut up some chicken tenders and do my fast little secret trick. If you guys don't do this, you definitely need to try it. Just dump some zesty Italian dressing over your chicken. You don't need anything else, that's literally it. And it makes the best chicken. In fact, it makes amazing chicken to grill as well. And I used my favorite veggie seasoning for over top of the veggies and it all turned out so yummy and everybody enjoys eating this this way. Another thing I haven't made in a long time is waffles and I wanted to really try out another gluten-free waffle option. You can make this with regular flour. In fact, I think the recipe calls for regular flour and I'll be honest with you, with the gluten-free flour mix that I make myself, I kind of felt like these got a little crunchy. I'll tell you about that in a second. But before I do, I want to say that I just got this waffle maker and you all know I had a really small one to make freezer waffles. And this one makes four waffles at a time. It's a pretty big machine, but honestly, the time that it saves me and all of the healthy waffles I can make at home, I just love it and it was totally worth it. So back to what I was saying about them being a bit crunchy. I think I may have I've also left them in the waffle maker a little too long. You know that I love to share with you when things don't turn out the way that I think they're going to because there's way too many videos out there that everything looks picture perfect all the time. And this recipe, I wanna tweak a little more. I definitely think it needs a little less flour also. You'll see me here as I'm mixing the batter. I was adding in almond milk because I felt like it got really almost like cookie dough consistency. So I need to tweak it, but it's still a recipe that I would recommend because the flavor profile with the oats mixed in 
was so delicious. My girls were even raving, mom, these taste so good. So even though they ended up on the crunchy side, we'll just douse them in butter, douse them in some maple syrup, and eat them anyways, and I'm gonna try to make this recipe again. I know I mentioned this recently on my home channel where I do a lot of home inspiration and home organizing, but I am getting more active on Instagram again, just posting daily life and things like that. I know a lot of you have missed my vlogs and I do want to get back to my vlog channel, but I am trying to be a little more active on Instagram. So go ahead and jump over there and you can give me a follow and we can chat. I love being in my DMs over there as well. So if you have any questions, that's the best place to get a hold of me. So that's all that I prepped this day. I hope this inspired you. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. Give this video a like. That always helps me out. And I'll see you all in next week's video.